asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Um, hopefully, Pat can hear me. Pat, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Thank God for that, Pat. <laughs> yeah, uh, so things just stop working all the time. Uh, I wonder why. I don't know. I'm going to put some parentheses around why. But, uh, yeah, I, I tried from another device. and now it's working. Gremlins. There could be gremlins in the system. Let me introduce you, anyway. I came across you because some of, uh, our, some of our listeners got in touch and said because... Because I often talk about the Zionist influence on UK politics, that I'd be interested in meeting you. Pat's a Republican politician. He's running for US Senate in California. I mentioned earlier he's an IT engineer by trade, but he's also a Marine Corps veteran who served in Afghanistan. Now, Pat was removed from California's Republican Party convention because one of his stated policies is to remove Jewish leaders from power. However, despite the, the negative headlines... A, a opinion poll, a respected opinion poll, showed that Pat was on 18%, putting him second behind the incumbent Senator Diane Feinstein, whom a lot of our listeners will know all and about. There are, there are 32 candidates, by the way. And 32 candidates. And I must mention, Pat's website is littlerevolution.us. That's www.littlerevolution.us. So welcome to the show, Pat. Thanks for coming on. First up... Um, We've got about 29 minutes, maybe a little bit less to chat. Your campaign slogan is liberate the U.S. from the Jewish oligarchy. What do you mean by that? I mean exactly verbatim what it says. Uh, we're ruled by a bunch of uh, Jewish supremacists that don't believe in the rights of any humans outside of their group. We're ruled by people that shoot pregnant Palestinian Christians and Muslims in the stomach and get away with it. Uh, we are ruled by monsters, and if you thought that King George was bad in 1775, King George has got nothing on these Jewish supremacists. Now, some of our listeners will say, your government is run by Donald Trump, and the, those... Bullshit! Those, well, be, before you say bullshit, let me put the question to you. They will say... <laughs> They will say you've got a president there that you supported, Pat, and that he appointed his cabinet accordingly. He made those choices of his own free will. That's who's running things in the United States. Explain to those who are new to this how there is a Jewish oligarchy. How, how are Jews in power in Washington, D.C.? Oh, simple. If you publicly disagree with them, they put a bullet in your head. Example. Remove, yeah, uh... Even Richard Nixon behind closed doors said the things I'm saying, and the moment the Jews figured out that he was saying these things behind closed doors, uh, he had just won a 49-state landslide. So he won 98% of the United States member states. He won in a landslide. You, elections like that happen once every few decades, where this, the American people say, this is the will of the people, that this is a mandate for this man to reign. And he was loved by the American people. He was a self-made man. And you know what? Coming up from the bottom, not growing up and uh, hanging around Jewish elite kids, he uh, he went ahead and just named the Jew to a very powerful Christian leader. And the Christian leader said, yeah, we got to get these Jews out of power. And not long after that, the Jews were gunning for him, uh, using their media and their their court the, their control of the courts to, to run him out from office. Um Richard Nixon wanted to name the Jew, but he only did it privately, and he didn't uh, reach down and grab his uh, his testicles and say, I'm a man, I'm going to name the Jew publicly. And that's what he should have done. And I, I'd be happy to link you the tapes where he yeah. openly talks about Jewish supremacist uh, control of the country. Pat, are you, are you not conflating? Um, thanks for coming on. I enjoy these conversations, by the way. We don't have oh, enough sure. of these conversations on commercial and national radio. I don't necessarily agree with everything you say, but I'm interested in why you say it. I'm not patronising you. I'm here to listen to you. Are you, not, no, are you not conflating Jews with Zionism? Because as far as I'm concerned, Pat, Jews are white people too. They're not an ethnic group. <laughs> They're Jews. Hang on, hang on. Let me finish. Jews are Jews because they identify as Jew. And most Jews I know are as opposed to Zionism in the form of Israeli aggression in Gaza, as you are. So why lump Jews in 
with Zionists? Why do you do that? Well, uh, it's simple. It, uh, during uh, during the First World War, would the would would the press or the, or the military talk about being at war against uh, the the, um, the the imperial elite of Germany? No, they said they're at war with Germans. It, uh, you've got to check your double standards, Richie. There's no other group where you make this caveat or this disclaimer at the end. It's like you're running a pharmaceutical commercial and you're saying, warning, may cause, you know, in small text at the bottom of the screen <laughs> during, during the advert. Uh, there's no other group that you would do this with. And I ask you to conduct yeah. a, an inventory of your beliefs and uh, the way you, that you express yourself on other groups and say, is there any other group I do this with? I agree with you. However... However, I'm. This is an independent radio show, and I'm. I'm not. I'm not scared, or worried about expressing my feelings on Zionism and on Rothschild Zionism, and I have no issues with that. And I'll talk about it all day long. And I'll talk about the. I mean, I've read a lot of what you've been putting out there, and you're right to talk about the overrepresentation of Jewish folk in the media and in politics and in news. And I totally agree with that. But what I'm saying is there's a danger. And again, I'm not worried about being criticised. I'm not trying to cover myself here. There's a danger in, 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 in it sounding like the Jews. And the Jews then becomes a dirty word. And you're looking at a Jewish guy who could be living across the street from you. He's going to work like you. He's raising his family like you. And you're lumping him in with a Zionist agenda. And that's not fair. I'm not well, saying Rich, that you. Yeah, I agree that the Zionists are the worst of them. They're the scum of the earth. They have no conscience when it comes to killing innocent civilians. However, there are things... That, ah, damn it. That's your other Skype going off there now. It's all yeah. kicking off here tonight, Pat. It's all kicking off. Pat Little is our uh, guest. Pat is doing very yeah. well in the polls, in the U.S. Yeah. Senate race in California. But he's been um, hammered by some pieces in the media there because of his opinions on uh, Jewish representation and Jewish influence in the United States. Pat, we were just talking there about lumping the majority of Jews who are just ordinary folks who go to the synagogue, who live their lives like the rest of us, with a group of criminal Zionists and the dangers that of that. Go ahead. Just a moment here, sir. Now, are you aware of what affirmative action is? Yes. Now, did you know that a vast majority of Jews support affirmative action? According to okay. who, Pat? I can link the surveys. Uh, so do a request for information after this, and I'll link it to you. So according to this, this poll, uh, they phrased in a neutral way, do you support affirmative action? vast majority of Jews support it in the United States American Jews. Now, when the survey was rephrased, where it said, do you believe in affirmative action in such a way that it hurts whites, the percentage of Jews that supported it jumped something like 10%. So there's malicious intent of the average Jew, the majority of Jews against the, the, the ethnicity I belong to, ethnically European, I'm a mix of Irish, English, Welsh, Scottish. All the bad stuff, Norwegian. all the bad stuff, Pat, there, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I, <laughs> I'm, an Amer, I'm an Ameramut. I'm, I'm a European <laughs> an Ameramut, Jew, I love that. It doesn't matter. The average Jew sees me as just white, and the average Jew hates whites. I don't They're believe it. Service. I've seen no evidence no, it's, of it, Pat. It's absolutely true. Can I, can I say something and I'll shut up? Otherwise. Can I say something and I'll shut up? You make a very oh. good point about affirmative action, by the way. Positive discrimination doesn't work. It's ridiculous. There's a story here today in the United Kingdom about positive discrimination being applied to the National Health Service to get more ethnic minority people into jobs. It doesn't bloody work. I'll agree with that. I don't buy that the average Jew hates whites because I have no evidence of it. But let me put this to you, Pat. I have it. I, hold on. Now, how go about on, go on. Say, on the next show, you can you can discuss the validity of the sources I provide you with. Okay, this. go ahead. And now let's continue down that road. So they took, there was another poll. And it was what different groups in this country thought of each other. And so they asked first the Protestant white Christians and asked, which groups do you rate the highest? And they, there was a system of points. And they, they rated themselves very high. I don't know exactly what the, what the points they gave themselves out of 100. I think they gave themselves like 70 points, right? And right about the same, they gave 
Jews. They gave them like 69 or 68. Just, just and so they gave Christians and Jews very high scores. Now, on the flip side, they asked people that identified as Jews what who they ranked the highest, and of course it was Jews, and who they ranked the lowest out of all of the different ethno-religious groups in the country. They ranked white Christians lower than any other group at the bottom, down near dog shit. How many people were surveyed, Pat? I, I'll link you the polls, and you can see the you can see whether they were scientifically conducted and all for yourself. Let me let me make uh, two very quick points. Just two very quick points yeah. on that, and then you come back sure. at me. Then, sure. first of all, I think if you ask any identity group, and I I, I see yeah. people as identity groups. I don't see them as Catholics or Muslims or or, or Jews. I see people see people as asc- ascribing to or aspiring to an identity, and I don't like that. I talk a lot about identity politics. I think if you ask any group that sees itself as a minority and that has been taught since they were born to believe that they are an oppressed minority, I wouldn't be surprised if you get some of those answers that you said there. But equally, I also wouldn't be surprised if those results were manipulated by another force who wants to divide and conquer us along these racial lines, that wants us to hate one another. I'm not saying you hate anybody, Pat. I'm not saying no, I'm, that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying... I'm not the accusing you of that. Yeah. The only thing I hate is evil. And I have to look at what the Zionists are doing and say it's evil. And then I have to look at what Jews in general are saying and saying this is malicious. But they're now, no more evil Jews, Jews than, than you or I. Jews are no more evil than, than as I said, Catholics or, or now, Sikhs. Now, one or, moment. There are different levels of this. This is... I. I've given you a spectrum here. Yeah. I would say the average Jew has avarice towards the average white. And the average Zionist has genocidal intent towards everyone but themselves. <laughs> we agree now, on that. We absolutely now, agree on that. Go ahead. However, if, I would I would recommend heavily... Uh, just a moment, sir. Guys, can you be quiet back there? Good on you, Pat. That's it. No, no, sorry, sorry just a moment. That sounded very That sounded very authoritative there. That sounded very good. No, no, no. I've got uh, I've got some assistants that were having a discussion, and uh, I, I couldn't hear myself think. So um, the point I'm making here is that I read a book called Culture of Critique that I had read trying to disprove what I thought were anti-Semites. Uh, so I used to be very philo-Semitic. I would not. I held Jews to a double standard where they could. Walk, they were walking on water at all times, and they could do no wrong. And it came from watching conservative news media, Sean Hannity, Michael Savage, Mark Levin. Just Jews are presented as this unquestionable, um, infinitely wise, um, perpetual victim group of the Holocaust in this country, especially if you're a conservative. They are presented on a silver tray as just the... just. The, the, n- beyond reproach and uh, here like, and here I'll give you that n- and n- here n- now just just a moment and so when somebody when somebody uh, decided to to start talking about uh, Israel I said now saying something against Israel is anti-Semitism right so I wanted I did not care for what they said it gave me bad feelings it was like somebody talking about hurting a child and I said now, why are you saying these things about the Jews and the Zionists? And I said, uh, I said the Zionists are the best of the Jews, and the Jews are great. And they said, Pat, sit down and read a book. And if you still believe what you have been saying in the arguments against us, we will pretty much eat our shirts. And so I said, very well, I'll prove you anti-Semites wrong. And I read the culture of critique, and it turned my world on its head. And I noticed this line that has been drawn in the sand to limit discourse on the topic of limiting it to just criticizing Zionists. That is a form of controlled opposition and a form of gaslighting. If you read the culture of critique, you'll understand that it's not just the Zionists. The Gi- Zionists are just the un, the unbridled, unrestrained um, uh, kind of version of... Uh, they're pretty much Jews on steroids in terms of their their group paranoia, in terms of their perpetual uh, scapegoating of others or projecting of their own crimes onto others. The Zionists are the worst of them, and they are evil. 
But you have to recognize, as I did when trying to disprove criticism of both Jews in general and Zionism, that there is a group, evolutionary behavior, that fits a pattern going back thousands of years. And indeed, much of Jewish behavior and Zionist behavior is based in biology. A group paranoia, for example, um, now a large percentage of my heritage is Irish. Uh, the, the highest rates of schizophrenia in, um, in, in Europe, just marginally more than the other groups, the Irish are just about at the baseline, but studies have shown that Irish are just a pinch more prone to schizophrenia than, than other Europeans, but almost negligible. However, did you know that the average Jew is something like 20 times more likely per capita to develop uh, paranoid schizophrenia than the average Irishman? I don't, I don't believe that. I'm going to jump it's in true. just. I'm going to jump in just it's very true. quickly. Let, let me come back at you for a second. But let's have a back and okay. let's have a back and forth here. I don't believe that Jews, as a group, are predisposed to having the tendencies that you've described. And I'll tell why you why. Have been, why have they been kicked out of so many countries? There are plenty of groups that have come and sit down in Europe, and Europeans are not very ethnocentric. No, but you're talking to somebody who did did a degree in history. I know why minority religions came up against. And those who, again, aspire to minority religions ran up against problems, not only in Europe, but elsewhere through the centuries. And I don't want to get into it because we'll end up, we, we, we won't have time. And we can revisit but this again I, in the future. I, I can discuss the 400 countries they've been kicked out of. Now, I can discuss other religious and ethnic minority groups that did not happen to. They're the only group this has happened to. And every time they get kicked out, the language is very similar worded. Uh, separated through vast degrees of space and well, Pat, time, we could talk people about the always Crusades. cited the same reasons. We could talk about Crusades. Wars were fought over religion and religious beliefs for centuries. But let me make the point I was going to make. The point I was Go going on. to make is, I've known a lot of Jews over the years. Now, I talk on this program, you don't know me that well, so you wouldn't know, but we talk a lot about um, the Rothschild, Rockefeller, Warburg cartel, the central banking cartel, Rothschild Zionism, how it influences every government. Um, you know, basically, bar a few, bar a few in the world. My experience of Jewish people is that Jewish people, to me, um, people who, again, people who identify as Jewish, because it isn't an ethnicity, and I'm going to, I'll argue with you about no, that all day long. No, 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 hang on, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, and, you, and then I, I won't interrupt you, let me finish. I've, I've worked with, and I've lived around Jewish people all my life and I'm living in a city where there is probably a outside of London probably a larger contingent of Jewish folk than maybe anywhere else and they are as equally likely to be anti-governmental they are uh, equally as likely to be anti-Zionism and anti-Israel and there is no evidence whatsoever that there's some sort of clique that are secretly sitting around together uh, working on plans to take over everything and to influence everything I just don't buy it Pat I don't see any evidence of it Honestly, I, if, and, I, if I did, I would you, say you, it. You've, you've just underscored my point there. This is instinctual. Their behaviors come from their biology. It is instinctual. If you read the culture of your critique, you'll be able to understand the patterns of this behavior throughout history. They don't need to sit behind closed doors and organize it. They do it instinctively. The Jews didn't get together and sit down and have a meeting and say, well, we'll be 2% of the top performing high school students in this country, Yeah. but go ahead. we'll go ahead and be... Uh, 67% of the graduate students at Harvard. And I'm not making this up. You can go to Hillel's website and look at the 2017 uh, Guide to the Best Schools for Jews to Attend. They brag about this stuff amongst themselves. Now, when you said they don't, they're not a biological group, that's just not true. The average, the average Ashkenazi Jew that never left Russia after their arrival there is six times more related to a Jew in Jordan or Syria than then that Russian Jew is to a native Russian. So when you say it's a religion, that's They're not true. They're Caucasian, even this, even, One moment, one moment. You said you wouldn't interrupt. Sorry. The, the state of Israel also disagrees with you. The Jewish Daily Forward also disagrees with you. Let me, cite, let me cite one headline from the Jewish Daily Forward. Uh, Thank God for DNA testing. Now we can finally know who the real Jews are. In the state of Israel, if I, can, if I converted... To Judaism now, and let's say that I, if they let me attend an Orthodox synagogue, and I was observant, and I wore my um, tefillin, the, the thing on the forehead, and I wore my my, my 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 little brace on the arm there, and I was the most fervent uh, religious Jew in uh, in the world. If I don't pass the DNA test, I don't get citizenship in Israel. 
Now, there are some cases of high-profile people that convert and marry a Jew, and they'll let you in. If it's a publicity stunt where it's useful to them, like let's say that I'm a respected academic, let, let's say that a Nobel Prize winning um, a person with European blood converts to Judaism, they might make an exception if they marry a Jew and let them and their children live in Israel. Yeah. However, that is the exception to the rule. Now, if you don't believe me, contest my sources, which are Jewish. I'm not making this up. When well, I read the culture is. critique, I tried to disprove this stuff. You don't understand, Richie. I was trying to disprove the things I'm saying. I don't doubt you, Pat. I don't doubt you. Listen, this is an open platform. This is why you're on. Sure, again, sure. again, that's not to in any way patronize you. I don't um, sit here uh, attesting to or claiming that I have the answers to everything. I'm going to vehemently sure. disagree with you unless I see evidence. Well, you're you're let, disagreeing let me, with Jews. No, let me, hang on, let me, let me finish. On th this idea that there is some instinctive gene that is in Jews to behave like I just don't buy it. Let, let me let, let me just let, let me just I, I don't buy I don't believe it. Let me just say this. You're obviously very bright. Again, that's not in any way to butter you up because you talk about Zionist influence in the US and you talk about needing to stop that lobby and all other lobbies. Um you know, from influencing U.S. policy and U.S. politics, of course, and U.S. candidates. This is really important stuff. But I look at it, and I see when you talk about stuff like this, and listen, you're entitled to say whatever you want. Um, I believe in free speech. But Jewish men and women listening to this will say, this guy sounds articulate. This guy sounds interesting. He sounds like he's well-read. But they'll say, here he is saying that we're all predisposed to want to take over and to do this and to do that. So they'll say he's just a dyed-in-the-wool racist. That's what they'll say. Well, I mean, my response to that is that <clears throat> I didn't say all Jews. I said the average Jew is predisposed. That's the thing with empiricism and statistics and group evolutionary strategies. There are predispositions for the average person born as offspring to members of that group towards certain behaviors. And I can actually prove some of the stuff using biology and genetics. There are many heterozygous adaptations that are the result of inbreeding and selection for verbal acuity. And these things, when coupled together with two sets of the broken gene, instead of the heterozygous adaptation being manifested, result in schizophrenia or Tay-Sachs blood disorder. It's funny because most of the Jewish advantages, uh, the genes that have been identified for uh, heterozygous adaptations that give them uh, an edge in verbal acuity when this broken gene is present on one side and then a genetic disorder if both sides of the gene are broken have a corresponding disease. So um, are you aware of the disease Tay-Sachs? No. Tay-Sachs is a disease where you're no longer able to make healthy blood. It's, it's almost like... Um, it's almost like uh, when you nuke your bone marrow uh, to, uh, to get rid of the cancer for leukemia. You're no longer able to produce certain types of blood cells. Understood? Yeah, got it. Okay. Now, you know what that's the result of? No, I'm, I'm all ears. Go ahead, Pat. <clears throat> so, it turns out there's a gene that is very common among Jewish descended peoples, and... <clears throat> If just one side of the gene is broken, you get, on average, a slight boost in verbal acuity. The gene has been linked to verbal acuity, verbal IQ, yes? Okay. However, if both sides of the gene are broken, you get something similar to sickle cell. Now, this is the same thing as sickle cell anemia in terms of what a heterozygous adaptation is. So, in... In tropical climates, some peoples of the world have developed things like sickle cell, and there are some Mediterranean peoples, even some European-descended peoples that have a similar gene where one of the sides of a gene breaks in terms of producing proteins to be a certain shape. And if one side of the gene is broken, if, if this recessive trait, or if this trait, yes, if this recessive trait is present, then, uh, so you have small r, big r on this, uh, in your pun square, then you have partial immunity to malaria. However, if you have double recessive, both sides of the gene pair broken, this heterozygous adaptation is no longer an, an adaptation, but you have sickle cell. Now, the Jews have many, many, many genetic disorders from inbreeding. One of them is Tay-Sachs. This is very, very similar 
in terms of the way it works with heterozygous adaptation and double recessive, where if you get both sides of uh, of your uh, parentage, your lineage, inheriting this small R, the recessive, you get a blood disorder that's deadly. You need well, then you must um, then that must be prevalent then in Ireland and in other small countries around the world historically. No, it that's must not be. correct. The all you need to prevent genetic destruction through inbreeding is a population of 5,000 or more. It's called the critical number. This is a common number for mammals. It varies slightly based on species. Now, if you do it intelligently, you can get by with five. We don't see it in the gypsy community where there's a lot of in... Well, well, there is some in inbreeding. Gypsies travel far and wide and they have meetups when they're doing pairings. Not well. necessarily I'm, in places like the Republic of Ireland, they don't, Pat. No, uh, you, well, I, yeah, no, listen, I, I, if, yeah, uh, yeah. Dr. Kevin McDonald also wrote about the Roma, and they have a large infusion of, of, of European blood into them, so they're not as endogenous as the Jews are, and you can prove this with DNA testing. Now, the thing about the Jews is that they, they screwed themselves in many ways when they came to Europe because they were endogenous. They had the highest in-group preference in breeding of any other group, and I challenge you to read Dr. Kevin McDonald's A Culture of Critique and try to disprove anything I'm saying here. I've and, not read the book, Pat. I, I, you know, I, I will look it up. Um, now, it, it, now, it, now, now, just a moment. We, we've only so, got about three or four minutes left, and you're, you've kind of lost me I, with a lot of that genetic talk, to be honest. Jew, Jews it's gone over my head a lot. They were very, very small uh, groups in places in Eastern Europe, and they were forced to do generation after generation of cousin marriage for hundreds of years in many of these towns where they couldn't support a large population. In town uh, and in towns often where they were in ghettos and d didn't have freedom to travel as much as they wanted. So Jews suffer from many diseases of inbreeding. Inclu this includes mental illness. And the Jewish doctors in Israel actually test parents before they have kids in Israel now to see if they have these unique Jewish uh, mutations. I'd have, have to see evidence double recessive for the heterozygous adaptations. I'd have and to see you evidence have a of severe that. genetic disorder. They I'd do test these things in Israel if. Both parents test for the recessive uh, a recessive gene that's responsible for Tay Sachs. They 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 have they make sure their children are monitored. You're getting a very uh, interesting reaction just before we finish, and I am going to give you the final word. You're getting a very interesting reaction from my audience. My audience hmm. seem to be, um, and it's not always the case, by the way, but they seem to be on my side. You've written and said a lot of interesting things about Zionist influence in uh, U.S politics in media in in uh, entertainment and the problems with that geopolitically worldwide and what it's led to um, we could talk about obviously the apartheid racism that's on uh, display in technicolor every day in israel but a lot of my listeners are saying that this is classic kind of double agent stuff pat is on the one hand identifying a real problem with zionist influence in the world and then He's undoing that work by saying stuff which is blatantly racist. That's what they're I've saying. Actually, I've been offered money to make a clear distinction between Judaism and Zionism. And I will not take that money. I can show you the emails. Someone said I can set you up with millions in funding if you'll draw this distinction. And I will not do it because I don't see the clear line. I see a stratification. Uh, but... Zionism is indeed Jewish behavior. When people say that Zionism is not Jewish, I would say no, it's just the worst version of Judaism. And I disagree with that fundamentally. Because it's not I been do, my experience. I and I feel sorry average... for Jewish people. I'm not listen, I'm not giving you a hard time now. But I feel They're desperately right. sorry for Jewish people when they hear this. Because they, they listen to this and they think he should know better. Pat Little should know better. He's obviously bright. He's obviously bright, well-written, well-spoken. He should know better. The Zionists are not Jews, and Jews are not necessarily Zionists. And Jews listening to this will say, Richie, you've brought a racist onto the programme. Now, I don't necessarily think you are, because I think you believe this wholeheartedly. And I, and I, I admire... couldn't disprove it. Beliefs are not based in fact. These yeah. aren't beliefs. These are things I could not disprove. I came into this very philo-Semitic, very pro-Jewish, However, when you like a good scientific theory, if you hold the theory up to the to, to the flame of truth and burn away the slag of the things that cannot be defended, the, the things that can be disproven when you try to disprove them, then you, you modify your theory. However, the, my, what I'm saying here is a result of examining the evidence objectively without any emotional restraints on my inquiries, and this 
is what I see as the scientific truth that I cannot get anyone to disprove. And but to be me. fair, Pat, I've, I've, but to be fair, I've let me say this, let me say this, me. let me say yeah. this, but to be fair, you're not a geneticist, you're not a, bio, you're not a biologist, you're not a man of science, and again, listeners will say, Richie, you've given Pat an easy ride there. You know, you should have shut him down very quickly and say, look, you're not a... But I don't do that. We don't do that on this programme. We have enough of this hostile bullshit interviewing on television. And I, I'm sick of people being labelled as racist or hateful without anybody having a chance to hear what it is they're saying. I don't believe you're hateful. And I don't believe you're racist. But then again, it's not me that you're making these claims about. Some of our Jewish listeners will say... Richie, you're full of shit. The guy is absolutely racist. Pat, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to give your website address out. LittleRevolution.us Pat's running for the Senate against Diane Feinstein. He's polling very well. I'm going to give you the final word, Pat, and say that um, you're always welcome to come back. Final word to you, my friend. You've got 30 seconds. My final word is always say the truth. Never let yourself be intimidated. If they threaten you or your family, double down with the truth. If, you're, if what you believe to be the truth is disproven, evaluate the evidence presented to you. If your theories or your ideas don't hold up to the light of scrutiny, then you must modify them. Honesty and brevity are the ways forward. The truth is ultimately what we're going to have to go by, and it's time for open discussions without Jewish supremacists and Zionists making laws against discussions like this, because when things like this happen behind closed doors instead of in the light of public scrutiny, then bad things can happen. So speak freely, but also be honest. Absolutely and, uh, right. I agree with I echo everything you said there. We, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on the, 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 uh, the Jews. Pat, it's going to be an interesting campaign and an interesting vote. Um, good luck with it. Thanks for coming on, by the way, and taking the invitation up. And if you, if you fancy coming back again in the future, we'll uh, take this up again. All the best, Pat. Thank you. Very welcome, sir. And I now have a volunteer uh, doing scheduling. I'm no longer a one-man campaign, so uh, we can schedule promptly next time without a whole bunch of uh, trying to find each other emails. <laughs> Not at all. It was easy enough, Pat. Thanks very much. All the best. Pat Little, live on The Line to Us there from California. Check out his website, littlerevolution.us. So, yeah, a number of listeners got in touch with me last week to say that they were very interested in what he was saying, including Deborah, who said, get him on. Um, yeah, I mean, with guys like Pat Little, I, I believe that he believes absolutely in what he's saying. He believes it 100%. I don't believe it. I don't agree with him. Um, my interest in, in him was, was, was the listeners getting in touch, but also the fact that the US media covered him being thrown out of the Republican convention and labeling him a white supremacist, um, uh, racist effectively. So there you go. Um, I don't agree with any of this, that there's any gene that Jews are predisposed to want to sit around conspiring on how to take over everything. I don't believe it because it isn't true. I've seen no evidence of it. And I totally understand when Jewish people hear that and it drives them batshit crazy. Maybe it would drive me batshit crazy if I was in their position. I make a strong distinction and always have done between Judaism and Zionism. Judaism is an identity. It's a chosen identity. It's an identity that you're born into, like Christians are born into it, like Sikhs are born into it. Children are not given a choice. You are a Jew, you are a Christian. In terms of Christian, you might be a Catholic, you might be a Methodist. This is what you are. And as you grow up, this is what you are told and all of that. And Judaism is no different. None. Where, where, where he was interested, I think, is talking about victimhood and how certainly among some Jews, and certainly maybe in some communities where you might have um, predominantly Jewish people, there might be a tendency to uh, believe in the supremacy aspect of it. But not because of any genetic predisposition. I don't believe that at all. And again, I say, most of the Jews I've met, worked with, um, interviewed, had arguments with on radio over the years, and sometimes not, don't agree. Most do not uh, agree with the, uh, and I've interviewed a lot of Orthodox Jews, do not agree with the State of Israel. Many of them don't agree, that I've interviewed, do not agree the State of Israel should exist. So again, we're back to dealing in absolutes. I don't believe in absolutes. Jews as a identity group are no more 
less or, or are no more likely to be nasty, to be evil, to be rude, to be unkind, to be violent. They're not any more disposed to those things than I am or anybody else is, in my opinion. 